Which major college football head coaches are on the hot seat going into 2024? Welcome back. It's the fellows from 3 and Out, Brandon, Noah, and Drew. Coming back at you with another tier list. Today we have um, five coaches on a hot seat tier list. I'll run down the tiers for you real quick. Starting at the top with flaming hot, going down to hot, warm, cool, and then finally, not on the hot seat. Um, we have a collection of Power 5 coaches here um, that have had a little bit of controversy around them. Maybe not even controversy, but um, maybe some people who have been with their program for a while and haven't seen results, stuff like that. Um, so we're going to just get right into it, um, starting off with the head coach of the Florida Gators currently, um, Billy Napier, in his, I believe, third season, going into his third season. Um, it may not be his third. I don't know ball, but something like that. Um, pretty early in his tenure, um, what do we think? I think the, the most news that I've heard around him um, has been with um, all the recruits they've been losing as of lately. Mm-hmm. Very true. Um, yeah, I was having a conversation with, you know, one of the guys in our last video, Chris. Uh, Never heard of him. Film stocked himself. Um, we we kind of drew a bit of a comparison between the fan base and kind of culture around Florida to that of Auburn. That they're very, you know, kind of impatient. They got the boosters behind them, throwing a lot of money and influence around. They get a head coach like Auburn had with Brian Harson, who. Early on, didn't really show a whole lot in terms of his ability to kind of grow the program into more of a contender. Um, the support kind of waned, and it waned quickly, uh, and they got him the hell out of there. And I think Billy Napier is in quite a similar spot. If uh, they don't come out of the gates hot and aren't, I'll, I'll just say, aren't ranked through Jacksonville, like going into Jacksonville week against Georgia, if they're not like, ranked or at least in the mix for the SEC, mm-hmm. we might be looking at a fire in here. Yeah, that's what I thought. He was, he, yeah, he started at Florida in 2022. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong, Noah. I just think, like, that's early as shit if he does get canned. At the, I mean, I just, uh, yeah. they jumped yeah, the gun with Mullen. Absolutely. I mean, we've talked about that yes. before. I mean, Probably on this channel. Dan, so. As funny as looking as he was, and how goofy of a coach that he is, like he was the last Florida head football coach to beat Georgia. Um, I mean, he was the last sure. one to. I don't know. He, he, Dan Mullen is not a bad coach. He just has. He, he's a good recruiter. He just had trouble developing people that aren't quarterbacks. Uh, Billy Napier. Honestly, I don't know how he can develop because you got to be able to recruit before you can develop. And they're like you said, they're losing recruits left and right. And then with this controversy going on um, with the NIL money that apparently was taken off the table, um, you know, I don't know if verbal contracts are uh, respected in Florida. I know they are in Georgia, but. Uh, Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. So anyway, wait, welcome, podcast. welcome back to Legal Twenty One Twelve. Oh yeah, his seat's hotter than it should be, but I know that Florida just absolutely hates to see that Georgia's doing well. Like all their rivals are doing well. Yeah, uh, Georgia, Florida State, Tennessee, uh, pretty much everyone except Miami that their rivals with is doing well, and I know it pisses them off. Um, so I guess like if I had to throw him in a tier at the moment, I don't know if it's flaming hot, but I think the allegations, like if, if, if the legal, um, pressures also add on top of the fact that he can't recruit and the fact that all their, uh, rivals are doing well, he might get canned after this season if they miss a bowl. Um, yeah. Does bowl eligibility save his job? Or is that not enough? I think it should. <clears throat> it should. I honestly don't think it's it enough. should. Yeah. That's I think just me they missed the bowl. It should. Yeah. Just last year? Yeah. Okay, last year. Not, not the past two years? Yeah. 
I think they they got like shit canned by um, somebody Pac-12 team anyway two years ago. Uh, yeah, going not to a bowl game is tough for the Florida faithful. So I'd, I'd say he's in that orange category, the little the little hot mm-hmm. hot seat. My, yeah. my opinion. I like it. I think um, I, I like think that. I agree. I think it's hotter than it should be. And I honestly don't know if he should be fired after, fired after this coming season, especially with you got to think about who are they going to hire. You know, yeah. I don't really know if there's any good options coming up into this upcoming off season. I mean, I know Florida is a pretty historic program. Um, some people maybe even call them a blue blood, depending on who you ask. But um, I don't know, man. It's just with that winning culture they had um, in the past couple of decades. I think those fans they have another losing season. They're going to be calling for his head, um, whether or not there, he deserves to be fired. Um, is there a scenario he gets fired midseason? With that schedule, if they lose out like through the <laughs> midseason, they might. I could see it. Because that schedule is the hardest in college football. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's at least top three, if not the hardest. Early season... They play Miami, Samford, and um, at Miss State, UCF, they, and then ten, at September, Tennessee, October. Kentucky. That that's the through third. October, heading into Jacksonville, Gone. and then Gone. their back half is so just a, oh my gosh, their back half. Georgia so at Texas, LSU, Ole Miss, Florida State, crazy. Before they go into Jacksonville, be like a little, yeah. If they're gonna do it, that's where they need to yes. I think they lose out after the so, bye. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a mid-season firing going on here. Probably not. Because, um, yeah, he could be bowl eligible by October, which is not easy. But, yeah, I think hot is a good yeah. landing spot for Billy. I like it. Yeah. Next up, we have Mr. Dabo Sweeney of the Clemson the Tigers. Flaming hot Cheeto himself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we've had a few conversations surrounding Dabo, um, just with the whole NIL, you know, not taking anybody out of the portal, um, doing it, you know, just recruiting and developing. My thing is, and I think, I don't know if you were there, Drew, but I didn't know no was, we were having having a conversation about, I don't know if Clemson has what it takes to fire him, even if he continues down this path. Because I think he's significantly handicapped Clemson where they're at already a major disadvantage going into it without dipping into the NIL or the portal. However, with what Dabo's done, I just don't know. if Because there is the ACC, they're going to be in contention. I just don't know if they're going to get rid of him. Well, yeah. I mean, my initial thoughts without looking at their schedule, that's what I'm looking at right now, or going to be looking at right now. Um, I mean, they're... Without looking at their schedule, their floor is eight wins, most likely. Uh, they're probably going to contend for an ACC title berth, if not a uh, championship. And with the new format, with the new playoff format, they should be a playoff team. And it's re- like you can't justify firing a man that has brought you, what, two or three national championships within the past calendar decade. Um, yeah. If he doesn't win... I mean, you know, if he wins at least eight games, there's no way they fire him. Mm. Yeah, no so shot. It might be, it might be warm, like the, because obviously, like the discussions are being had because like college football is moving around him, but if he can continue to win eight or ten or you know ten or so games, um, I don't think they have the, I don't think they have the balls to fire him. Um, That's valid. But yeah, I mean. Georgia should, should lose. They got App State, NC State, Stanford, Florida State. If he can go to Tallahassee and win that game, he, he there's no way. Um, because yeah, the back half of their schedule is a joke. Their toughest their toughest test is Louisville at home. <laughs> so if he, if if they can just weather the storm, and they they and they host South Carolina, I guess it depends on the what South Carolina looks like there. But if they can weather the storm through the first part of October, Dabo's cruising. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
we're arguably talking about the second best coach in college football right here. I think um, a lot of this stuff is a little overblown about, like, and I keep going back and forth on this. Like, part of me is like, oh, he's screwed. He's not using the portal. He's not using NIL that, like other programs are doing, and that's severely hindering him. But at the same time, like, guy's got a proven track record. He he can win. I think a lot of this also has, you know. It also depends on what Clemson as a university does with the ACC. If they find themselves, you know, two years down the line entering the SEC and they have the opportunity to swing big at somebody else to kind of lead the program. Like, you know, two years from now, we don't know, A, what jobs are going to come open, B, what kind of players are going to be, you know, kind of available in that, you know, coaching carousel type situation. So, I mean... It depends on that, and it depends on Clemson potentially leaving the ACC. But right now, I don't really see it. I don't really think Clemson I mean, has him on the hot seat. But I think as fans, we love to speculate. You know, if, if like they're not winning like they used to. So with the idea of jumping conferences, wouldn't you want some continuity? Hmm. Yeah. Driving the ship. That's fair. That's I mean, true. I do, I do think point. like with his morals and like. The hill that he's decided to die on. He's in the right conference to do it. I mean, no offense to the ACC, but I think it's just a statistical fact. Yeah, <laughs> they are, they are a bottom two power four conference. Uh, At least. Depending on the year, they could be bottom yeah. one. Mm-hmm. They probably will be bottom one this year, but that's that's speculation. Mm-hmm. Probably. Like, yeah, that's fair because if he was in, I don't yeah. know, man. If they were in the SEC, they'd get eaten alive. Without that, I think. I mean, I think they could still be competitive, but yeah, it'd yeah, be a whole, yeah. whole different conversation. I mean, they they wouldn't be, you know, they wouldn't be down at the Arkansas, or Mississippi State level. No, they'd be battling out. They'd be battling out with Tennessee right now. If they play tennis, yeah, Ole Miss. yeah, yeah. Ole Miss, if, if they, they, they'd be floating right there around tier two. Yeah, I agree. So, I agree. And yeah. I mean, I was looking at it just now. It's like, oh, Clemson had such a down year last year. I looked at it. They won nine games. You know, yeah. in my head, it, I, in my head, they were worse than that. So, it, I'm cool with them not on the hot them. seat. But I mean, yeah. I feel like it just like is something to keep an eye on in the coming seasons, um, because a lot of the speculation is he's going to get passed by by college football. I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm yeah. cool with not on the seat at all. He could also be on the cool side of the seat. Yeah, I, I think you know. we're like right there. You know. Yeah. You know yeah. that kind of thing. Noah, I don't think you ever. Did you ever like pick a category? Okay, all right. I, I lean not on the hot. If anybody on the list is, is yeah. that, I think is him. But the, yeah, just because of the past success. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Pretty a transition there. Someone who has been pretty consistent, but not nearly the level of of success as Dabo. We have James Franklin, um, for the Nittany Lions. Mm. We've also had conversations about this man in the past about his potential ceiling being reached at <laughs> this program. He uh, would do so well at like an NC State or a Louisville. I can see it. In my opinion. I think he would thrive in the ACC. But anyway. I mm, see he's in a tough program. spot. I mean, yeah. when you're behind Michigan and Ohio State every year and then this year you get Washington and Oregon added to that upper echelon of the Big Ten. Mm. There's a chance that Penn State gets lost in all that, I think. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough, man. I think um, you're, you're exactly right. They're definitely kind of looking. Their conference might pass yeah. them by. I mean, they were already playing third fiddle to Ohio State and Michigan. Mm-hmm. And even some years, you know, Michigan State would jump them. But now it's like, uh-oh, we got some, got some more players coming in. So... I think with Franklin, the big thing is, is he gonna is he gonna die on the Drew Aller Hill? Because we had a video come out. I guess depends on when this comes out. Um, going over some of that some of that spring ball tape and was not, was not pretty. Yeah, yeah. I think um, you know his defenses while he's at been at Penn State have always you know kind of skewed above average to better, um, if not, you know, one of the best units in college football this entering this year. Um, so that won't be the issue. It's just 
winning in the common era of college football requires, you know, the offense. So, and all the talent that they've amassed, you know, they can't, it doesn't, it hasn't really translated to, you know, winning on the field and winning the way, you know, the dominant programs win by putting up a lot of points. So I think you got to take that into account and it's, it's Absolutely. essentially a Georgia Mark Richt conversation where it's like, we have, we have achieved sustainability we're always going to be in like eight to ten wins Mark Drake, though, conversation he every year. Made it to the conference championship game, if not won the conference. I mean, I know it's tough. That's true. Especially That's when true. they had divisions. You know, this year it's a very good point. Been, like, it's tough when you're playing third fiddle in your own division. Yeah. It's tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting to see without divisions in the yeah, Big Ten. I agree. What they? I what think they if they don't make a strong push for that 12-team playoff, there's conversations to be had. Which be they very well could. They could go yeah, they 10 could. to and be chilling on their couches conference championship weekend and squeak in yeah. 10, 11, or 12. And that might be a saving grace, I think, because then yeah. you can add that to, you know, at least the list of accolades for the season, you know, not like a New Year's Six ball game. You know, you made yeah. a playoff. So you're, yeah. you're in it every year. You have a well, chance to win it all. Which yeah. is the new equivalent of a New Year's Six bowl game. But yeah, True. <laughs> That is true. Mm. Mm. Right now we're looking at what looks like a $49 million buyout if they wanted to fire him because in 2021 he signed a 10-year $70 million extension. So the buyout is something to consider as well. I don't think so. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. As far as like the Penn State culture, I know it's like – I know you got the wideout, you got the VR, got the Nitty Lion, who's apparently a defensive tackle. Um, ha! <laughs> 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 um, but like I just like like we talked about with Florida oh, fans yeah. and Auburn fans, like we know they are so desperate to win football games. I don't know if Penn State fans are that desperate to win conference championships and national championships. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, if you're a Penn State fan, Calm please. Down I am. I don't no. know. Penn State fans. <laughs> Sorry, I live in I live in Atlanta. Like y'all are pretty far from. Me. Yeah. So, but I, if I had to give it a, if I had to give it something, he'd either be in warm or cool for me, just because the vibe I'm catching is that Penn State might be okay with winning nine or ten games a season and calling it a calling it a. Good year. Yeah, I mean, high ceiling or high, low ceiling, high floor. I feel like is yeah. that. They're not going to be yeah. bad. So yeah. if you're good with not being bad as a as a program, and maybe you get a a year here and there where you make a, a good push for it, then why get rid of them? You know. Yeah. But like you said, it all really comes down to the the athletic program and their goals. And you know, is I think the parallel to the Mark Rick Georgia days are is is huge. You know, are you going to yeah. stay at that level, or are you going to take a gamble, yeah. go go hire somebody else and see if they can take you further? You could set I yourself mean, back many, many years by doing that, and you could be yeah. worse. So yeah, you could you could you could roll the dice and get screwed. Look mm-hmm. at Florida. Yeah, I mean, no no disrespect to Billy Napier, but you know, but you could roll the dice and get the next Kirby Smart. Like you just don't know. But I mean, looking at their schedule, guys, like the first half of it is very favorable. West Virginia, Bowling Green, Kent State, Illinois, UCLA, USC, Wisconsin. Like, their first true test is in November. Like, they could be undefeated going into, uh, sorry, hosting Ohio State. That is very possible. And if they are, and, well, the only thing is they play Ohio State and Washington back-to-back. But, Yeah. Washington, yeah, gonna especially be, they're hosting. They're Washington. not going to be with. They either. host both those games. But, so if if he can yeah. weather the storm in early it's November, he can finish the season ten and two. And if he plays Ohio State close, he could very well get the playoff and quote unquote save his job. I mean, I think the, I think the seats either warm or cool. I'm probably leaning cool just because of the culture there at Penn State. Um, if, if he goes eleven and one, I call this season a success. Yeah. I'm fine with cool. I like. I think I like that. After some yeah. more, I think that works. Kind of. I think they're in a, there, There's definitely yeah. worse spots to be in. 
as a program, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, moving on to somebody who's very similar to James Frank- Franklin, in my mind, except a, a bit worse, um, is Mark Stoops um, for Kentucky. He's been there quite a few years, maybe nearly as long as James Franklin has been at Penn State, um, at least coming up on a decade, if not already there. But they have that same issue, except they're not in that upper part of their conference. They're more skewing toward the middle of the conference. Stoops has been there since 2012, by the way. Sorry. There you go. So over, over a decade at Kentucky. Another very Mark hmm. Richt-esque scenario here where if you're Kentucky, are you happy with where you are? Because there's worse teams in the SEC, mm-hmm. but there's better teams. There's a lot of better teams. And you just got two more teams that are better than you in the oh, SEC. Yes. So, uh, At least one. Well, yeah, they, they did. They, almost almost lost lost they did. It was a midnight call to, to yeah. stop it. <laughs> yeah. They almost lost them. So he's, he's yeah. obviously Shout out Mike less Elko. than happy. Yeah. I wonder if that plays a role here. I think it definitely could. Yeah. But, oh, you don't I mean, want to be here? Be, you know? Yeah, don't you don't want to be here? I mean, I think he does get helped out by the fact that Kentucky has been known as a basketball school for the past hundred years. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll call it 50. I, I can't remember when Bear Bryant was there. But, <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. no, I mean, yeah. He, he's, got a, he's, got a good, he's got a good floor just not that high of a ceiling because he is in the SEC and he doesn't get the majority of the athletic department's funding. Nope. They're little brother to basketball, man. They are. Uh, but they uh, didn't they just get rid of Coach Cal? Yeah. So yeah. he is... Yeah. yeah that's he crazy. Is a big, he is now a big back. man on campus. Mm-hmm. Which is crazy. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, looking at the schedule... They do play Don't Georgia, Georgia like September fourteenth. Oh, we'll do that. They host Georgia, but they do play. Damn. Georgia. Got to go to the Knog, man. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Uh, they play Georgia, Ole Miss, Tennessee, and Texas. That's tough. Mm. This Dude. man's be fighting for his life for bowl eligibility. I mean, yeah. It's a murderer. I mean, to be fair, they also have sprinkled in there Southern Miss, South Carolina, Ohio, Vanderbilt, Florida, Auburn. Murray State and Louisville. So, yeah, I mean, to be fair, I don't think all of mm. those SEC teams you just listed are guaranteed. Not I'm not saying that you were saying it was guaranteed, but like, I yeah. feel like an, a couple of those, you know, like an Auburn. I don't know if they're going to Jordan Hare or someone like that. They're they're hosting. Um, but you know, so, I think somebody okay. could probably beat them. That they probably shouldn't. Yeah, like should they beat Florida? Probably. Should they beat Auburn? Probably. Yes. Um, should they beat Louisville? I don't know. That's that's a freaking, weird one. That's a weird one. That's that's five months from now. I have no <laughs> idea. Should they beat South Carolina? Probably. But we sure. don't know. I mean, I, I think I think the only thing that makes me lean to a little warmer than I probably would think would be the fact that he wants out. Yeah. I don't know if he's on the hot seat per se. He might be. Well, he might be on the hot seat. He might be the one fan in the flame. I think they would be so yeah. so dumb to fire him, just because. I mean, I'm gonna piss off some people by saying this. Who who the hell wants to coach at Kentucky? Like I'm I'm sorry. They're <laughs> respectfully. I no disrespectfully. Yeah. Who wants to coach at Kentucky? You're playing second fiddle to basketball forever and always. You're never going to be the center of attention on campus. You know, you're not the biggest draw. Like, you see Alabama, well, Alabama basketball is rising, but Alabama, Georgia, you know, LSU, like, main draw football Saturdays. Like, they get most of the athletic funding. You're not getting that at Kentucky. I'm sorry. Also tend to be pretty solid at baseball, but football and basketball seem to, like, pull from. It's pretty rare to find like a good yeah. football like, yeah, program. Alabama and, and Auburn can like do it in spurts here lately, um, but like I think eventually one mm-hmm. does outlive the other. Um, 
Yeah. And I think if you're talking about a, a, yeah. a school with a good football and basketball team in the SEC, the football team was good first from what I've seen, and then they've developed into their basketball team. With Kentucky, right. it's, it's the other way around. They've had a pretty historical basketball program, and then their football yeah. team is pretty mid. I mean, they're they're better than a lot of teams, but let, let's just be honest. If we're talking about the SEC, you're sitting right in the middle. I would I would put it at warm because yep. I, he wants out from what it looks like and but then again like you said is this the is this the school perspective think, or is this I think the, just the chair the guy just like like the position itself we just say likelihood that they're going to be coaching there next year the seat let's just go with that yeah 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 ah okay okay yeah I mean Texas A&M I mean that's pretty. Mm-hmm. That's you a pretty big happily, step dude. up from Kentucky. Like they got yeah. the boosters. Yeah, the they got all. Least, he they got all the fun. Two years, sucked ass, and got one of the well, another uh, record-breaking buyout. Like a lucrative buyout. I mean, hell, that, that's a hell yeah. of a retirement option. You know, yeah. Just, dude, pull a Jimbo. I mean, tank international. Yeah, tank. Yeah. I think I like warm now that you say that. Like, if we're just judging it by the seat, then, you know, it's college yeah. football. There will be a job open yeah. tomorrow. I mean, you know? Lincoln Riley could <laughs> jump ship, go to the NFL, become a premier offensive coordinator, and bam, all of a sudden the USC jumps yeah. open. I'm surprised he didn't jump ship this past offseason. I thought he was going to. Yeah, I you're know. losing your premier quarterback, you would think. Uh All right, well, rounding out the list with Mr. Born on Third himself. Yeah. I, I think uh, this time last year I said that he was going to be fired. So, whoops. Mm-hmm. If Crying he doesn't, line. if they don't have a very, very successful season this year, he, there's a good chance he's gone, I think. I mean, you're inheriting the first spot in the Big Ten. Michigan just lost – a lot of people. Washington lost a lot of people. Oregon's going to be pretty good. But they have so many returning starters coming back that have committed to this team. If he can't put it together, yep. I don't know when he's going to be able to put it together. Yep. Yep. Like, this is like the first team that's his that has all the pieces in the right place. Like, you, like the CJ Stroud here, like, yeah, all the pieces were in the right place. But you happen to run into one of the most dominant. Georgia football teams that we've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, a missed field goal. Yeah, came one play away from yeah, beating them exactly. too. Exactly, and I, if if they win that game, like they're winning the national championship. I'm sorry. Uh, Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. Hundred percent. He's not even 100%. on this list. If yeah, if they if yeah, they make yeah, that kick, I know a few Ohio State He's not even on the list. They are. Dying to win a national championship. Mm-hmm. Conference championships do not matter in uh, Columbus. So no, they, that they're above that. Their bars above conference championship. Yeah, with yeah. Like back. they, they see in, in their mind, they are Alabama North. Yeah, yeah. And that's <laughs> that's not ridiculous. That's not ridiculous. To say that. It's not ridiculous to say that. Uh, and honestly, there are probably Ohio State mm. fans out there yeah. that would take offense to the fact that I just called them Alabama North. They're like, no, we're better than Alabama. Like, mm. Right now, probably. Historically, over the past decade, no. Nope. Yeah. Um, you got you got one national championship. Um, I, I don't know. When I first joined the channel this time last year, I was like, oh yeah, he's getting fired. I would have put him in flaming hot. That's a little clip baby. <laughs> we still can. Yeah. We still can. <laughs> we can. Yeah. No, okay. <laughs> technically. I mean, technically, yeah. I think um, I think you said this, Brandon, or I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm usually wrong. Um, the amount of talent that they're loaded with is just, compared to the years, the couple of years prior, is ridiculous. I mean, you go and get Will Howard. You go and get Caleb Downs from Alabama, All-American safety. Just absolutely loaded. Those donors 
not afraid to cut the check because, like you said, they want this so much. I think if this if this year doesn't pan out, like maybe they slip up against Oregon and Eugene, yeah. or maybe. you know somewhere else along the way, maybe, maybe end of the season Penn shocker State against Michigan. Them. Then, oh, yeah. true, maybe this is the year. Um, we, who knows? Who knows? Maybe maybe Ryan Day is uh, searching for jobs, but. As far as his seat, like as of right now, I would say I would say warm. It's kind of warm. Yeah. I, I bet he's feeling the pressure a little bit, just because it's like, you know, you've won the conference. He's been coached since that what twenty twenty, I believe. I think it's before twenty nineteen. Around there. Twenty twenty. Because yeah. Urban. Because Urban. Urban, Urban won was with it the in Jags 2014. in twenty twenty. So. Yeah. And either way. Needless to say, he's yeah. he's done a lot of winning in his time as Ohio State head coach. Zero natties to show for it. And at a premier program like Ohio State, you don't know, you know, how long they'll yeah. want to yeah, I mean, settle for very good. It's been decades uh, since he won one. Twenty nineteen. There you go. Started. So we're yeah. talking about going into his what, sixth year? Cool. <coughs> well, he was the <coughs> he was the yeah he was the OC and he was he's also the, OC the acting for a while. head coach for the conclusion of the 2018 season. Mm-hmm. So he's been the guy, yeah, um, for sure, for a while. And it's just tough when I mean your head coaching record in the CFP is one and three. Yeah, can't have that. Yeah, not not at Ohio State. Mm-mm. What do we think? He, I mean, I'm cool to. My initial thought was cool, but I can maybe round up to warm because I do think like it's even in the back of his head that if they don't perform this season, there's going to at least be conversations to be had. Right. Well, because I feel like there's a difference between hot seat and pressure. Yeah, like, that's, that's like, fair. Like, you need to win this year because you have all the pieces in place. But if he – like, let's just say he yeah. wins the Big Ten, he gets the – two or three seed in the CFP makes it to a semi hell makes it to the national championship you can't fire him makes no. it to a semi you can't fire him can you I don't think so even if they make it to the CFP and lose their first game they play they made it to the playoff yeah you think so you that, think if they ooh, if they drop the first I don't know about that say they, they lose the conference like say say they they don't yeah they like backdoor in First round game at home, they catch a hot team and lose a heartbreaker. I think we are in territory. We're in fire yeah. territory. That's fair. I, I don't thinking... see that happening. Yeah, yeah. But Possibly. I mean, no. Just, yeah, no. keynote games. I mean, they host Iowa. I mean, Lord knows what happens when you play Iowa. Then they go to Eugene. They go to Penn State. I mean, they host Michigan, which is good. So. Hypothetically, they lose three games. They miss the playoff. He's he's gone, right? There's a very very good chance if they don't make the yeah. playoff that he's gone. Especially if you lose to your two biggest rivals. And if they don't Oregon. beat Michigan this year, they're going to be calling for his head. I mean, especially after the after the check that they cut in this yeah. you know previous mm-hmm. few months, mm-hmm. loading up on talent in the portal. It would just be, I don't know, it's just the litmus test that I'm using for Ryan Day is James Franklin. And, mm-hmm. like, because the fact that they are even in the same conversation right now is blowing my mind. Just because we have already said that Ohio State is better than Penn State. But I think that the fans and the culture at Ohio State want to win so much more than those at Penn State. That's what makes it a little better. So, for anyone in the comments who feels like coming for us, I was like, how the hell are you even guys mentioning these two men in the same breath when you admit one is way better than the other? That's why. Because the expectation at Ohio State is so much higher. I would probably go top of cool, look, bottom of warm. I mean, just because. If I'm out, if I'm outvoted, I can go Let's cool. Split hairs. Let's split hairs. Let's go bottom of warm. Bottom of warm? I like bottom, bottom of warm. I'm not pissed. I think he could very easily cool. be retained. If he just does what he needs to do, mm-hmm. he's got the talent. Yeah. He's got the tools. You just got to execute. Yeah, he's a he's a good coach. I don't think he's a great coach. He's a good coach. 
Yeah. He hasn't so, he's yet to prove he's a great coach if you're yeah. you're one and three in the in the playoffs, I think. You know. Yep. You can and get there believe, but you can't win the moment's too big. Yeah. You know. And I believe two and six in bowl games. Really? I wasn't aware of that stuff. Sorry, two and two and four. Losing record in bowl games, losing record in the playoffs. I mean, you can do whatever you want in the regular season, but when it comes down to it, and you have a losing yep. record when it really matters. Yep. Yep. You I know? forgot who it, I forgot like what movie it was, but it's like they always remember your last game. Like mm. no matter how the season goes, it's you know how you, your last game goes determines how people view you. So For sure. That's tough. But yeah. Anyway, I think that's good. Very nice. Performance good. Well, this is our ranking, everybody. Um, let us know in the comments if you agree, if you disagree, um, what you think about each of these coaches and how likely it is that they will be with their respective programs this coming coming off season after this after this year, or even a mid season firing. Um, but you know, we'll see. We'll see if it gets to that for a certain name on this list. Um, will be is is yet to be seen. But uh, thank you for watching. Um, you know, if you enjoyed what you saw. Thinking, think about throwing us a like, subscribing. Um, let us know any ideas you have for other videos you want to see in the off season. Mm-hmm. We love talking ball. Um, you know, the season is inching closer and closer. We're getting closer to previews, um, win total lines, all that fun stuff. So if you have any teams you want to see specifically in that, let us know, or just anything in general. Um, we are passing by the time um, for the season to get here by talking ball. Um, So yeah, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.